our meeting. Okay. So uh, notes. First, we're going to do three minor items. It was two minor items. I see I didn't update my header, but uh, there you go. So um, uh, folks, in looking over the multiple choice question progress check for unit seven, I found two quirks about array lists that I hadn't already mentioned to you. So we're going to cover that. But first, um, I wanted you to know uh, it was a super fun surprise and treat that I got an email from the College Board last week that said that Annalee High School was recognized by the College Board with their once a year female diversity award for, for this class, AP Computer Science. So um, this was for last year, not for this year, but this year we're doing great. Also last year we had eight, eight girls in the class and this year we do also. So thank you girls for taking the class. We're actually just one of 232 high schools in the whole country that was recognized for the uh, in this way for this class. So, and in fact, we're the only high school in Northern California. There were like, I forget, 10 or 13 other schools in California that received this recognition, but but not none up here where we live. So um, uh, they even gave me artwork for the logo. So I put it here in the slide anyway. <laughs> Thanks girls for taking the class. And thanks guys for taking the class. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, before I became a teacher, um, I was an uh, engineering manager at a software company. So I worked my way up at this company. I was employee number three and I started just doing software testing. And by the end of the last four or five years, I was literally director of all of our engineering. Uh, I had 45 people working under me in a 120 person company that was making $10 million of sales every year. Um, it was a stressful job. Um, and I became a teacher because I wanted to try teaching. I, I'd always thought I wanted to do that. But um, anyway, on the engineering team uh, at the end there, uh, we had, I forget, 10 or 12 software engineers. And I think four or five of them were women and uh, they did great work. So uh, this is a, it's a great field if, if you enjoy coding. Uh, it's not, people tend to think of it as a guy thing, but um, I'm here to tell you it's not just a guy thing. So anyway, kudos. All right, uh, so here's the, the added of the three things that's unrelated to array lists. Um, some of you have bills due for the AP exam in May, and I don't know if it's a bill for this class or for another class you're taking, but um, uh, I sent each of you a private chat that are affected by this, and I sent you an email ahead of time uh, before class, Just, and one of you already wrote back to me, so thank you. Um, uh, you got to pay your bill or tell Nancy that you're not going to take the test. I, I don't care either way, but um, if you, uh, what, what we don't want to do is have Nancy order the test, and, and then the school pays for the test, and then you don't pay the school back then um, first of all, I don't think we'll let you take the test if you don't pay for it. But third of all, uh, it just wastes money. Like if we, if we have to buy it and then you don't pay us back, then, um, then um, we've just wasted $94. So um, please, uh, if you're not gonna take the test, let Nancy know. And if you are gonna take the test, um, uh, and then pay, pay your fees. Uh, there's, you supposedly you got an email or your parents got an email. Um, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a student, so I don't know exactly your experience of it, but in my email to you, I gave you Nancy's email address if, if you need. There's also financial assistance available if you're in the free reduced lunch program. I think you get to take the test for free. So, um, you know, contact Nancy. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, now we are on to the two little things about array lists that I realized I wanted to tell you. Uh, one I wasn't aware of until uh, yesterday, two days ago when I was preparing this, the, the notes for this. Uh, so if you look here, this is how you're supposed to create a string array list. Uh, sorry, down at the bottom. It turns out Java lets you not, lets you omit the object type on the right hand side of the expression. Uh, if you do that, uh, REPL will complain every time you run your program, it says you're using an unchecked or unsafe operation. So, but it is legal, it's legal. You don't, if you say on the left hand side, what type of object it is, you don't have to say over on the right hand side, what type of object it is. But, 
but it's, I would go ahead and say it's bad form. So just be in the habit of putting the object type on both sides of the uh, expression, like I showed you at the bottom. So, but one of the questions on today's uh, AP classroom progress check, one of the questions has an answer where it shows it without the object and they're allowing that as one of the ways to do it, which is just a stupid question. Anyway, um, uh, the second point is something I glossed over because I thought it wouldn't matter, but they, uh, again, they gave you a question about it. So check this out. When you use the remove command to get rid of something in an array list, uh, Java gives you back the thing that got removed. So looking at this, uh, these, these commands here, I made a string array list. I added Gilly, I added Elvis. That's my rooster's name, by the way. And then I removed Elvis. And notice I'm printing it. So system.println names.remove one. What that does is it removes Elvis from the list and it hands it to the print call and it gets printed. So then, it, then it's gone forever. But uh, uh, it's just, I wanted you to know that the remove call hands you something. You, you don't have to use it. You could uh, uh, like look right here. Um, you don't have to do something with it. You can just use the remove call without printing it or without doing anything. But but look right here on line four, I'm saying, hey, remove Elvis and store it in this variable old name. That's that's one thing you can do, or, or you could print it obviously, or you could do what we've been doing until today, just remove something. I say names.remove zero. It just removes it and doesn't save it anywhere. So that's that's perfectly fine. There's no uh, there's no obligation to do something with it. But but I wanted you to know because I'm pretty sure I glossed over this before. It returns it to you. Uh, the other the other calls we have the add the two versions of add the set and the get they don't hand you anything to do. Uh, they don't they don't give you any information back. But remove does give you the thing that just got removed. And it's just good to know. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> and I lied. There is one more thing. I've I've always called the linear search a linear search, but in the AP classroom multiple choice questions, they call it a sequential search. So I'm hoping that you'll hear my words and understand that's the same thing as a linear search. It's it's when you are going to look through the whole, potentially the whole thing in order, either forwards or backwards, and just find something. That's that. It's called a linear search. It's also called a sequential search. So don't, don't be thrown off by that name. Okay, folks, we're gonna talk about sorting. Uh, uh, sorting's a huge deal in computer science. In this class, uh, we will discuss three types of sorting, two in this unit and uh, the third one in another unit um, later. Uh, but uh, you're not ever gonna be asked to write to code to actually code these, you know, like on the test. But you'll be you might be shown code and then be asked uh, to explain it, or you might um, uh, yeah you might be shown data and then be asked uh, to explain it. But related to these uh, sorts, so you need to understand how these sorts work. So uh, we have the two that we're going to learn today are called the insertion sort and the selection sort. So let's first talk about the insertion sort. Uh, to do this sort, you start at the second item of the list, and then you go backwards towards the beginning of the list and see if this second item should be inserted anywhere there. Like if, it, if it's, uh, I'm assuming we're gonna try to sort ascending. So you take the second item of the list and see if really it should be the first item on the list. Like just looking at those two things, should this item go before the one in front of it? Uh, you know, it's a yes or no. If it is, go ahead and do it. If not, then you don't do anything. So you just shift uh, things to the right if necessary. And then after that, you actually know the list is sorted. Uh, the first and second items of the list are sorted. So now you go to the third item on the list and you take that third item and say, should I put this anywhere before this on the list? Should it go? Should it go here? Should it go there? I mean, just you check back to the beginning, and and then and then if so, you put it in and bump everything over, um, and you just keep going up until you've gone through the whole list. Um, it's kind of a neat idea. Uh, 
because at any point, if you stop doing this, you would know the list is actually sorted up to that point. Say you made it halfway through the list and you had to stop for some reason, then you say, okay, well, I know the first half of this list is actually sorted because it's sorted item by item. Um, what would this look like in our class? So you might be shown actual code and be asked to uh, asked how many times uh, this particular line of code will execute for a given data set. Or you might be asked, you might be shown numbers and say, if I'm sorting this list of numbers, what would it look like after five passes? Um, so we're gonna we're gonna walk through both scenarios. So um, this is a lot to take in, but this is this is from our AP Classroom multiple choice question progress check that you're gonna start working on today. Uh, this is this is an insertion sort, a working insertion sort algorithm, and uh, interestingly enough, it's it's for an array, not for an array list. So uh, uh, these these sorting algorithms are for both arrays and array lists, not not just for array lists. Um, and I want to walk through this code and talk about how it works. Um, uh, so here's the code again. And down below on this window, I've I've made a, a int int array with ten eight three four in it, and then I'm calling. Um, and what happens is, uh, I, I I actually put this code in uh, in REPL, and I ran it, and I copied out the the, the results. I um, uh, uh, I added some print lines so I could see where where it was at. So. Uh, the data that we started with is 10, 8, 3, 4, right here, okay? And then uh, what happens is we're gonna look right here. It starts at element number one, and we're gonna go to the end of the list. And what this does is it grabs the current one that we're checking and throws it into temp, all right? And it says, we got this variable possible index. And as long as possible index is greater than zero and the one we're checking, which is temp, is less than the one before, then what it does is it actually goes ahead and sets it like it's gonna like it's gonna uh, it it does this insertion as it goes along. Look right here. It's taking it's checking the eight, and the first step uh, eight is less than ten. So what it does is it puts a ten here where the eight was. That's line ten right here. Uh, sorry, line nine. I said line ten, but that's that's the state of the data at line ten. Um, and then it lowers possible index down. And then in our case, uh, uh, the uh, that it reaches zero, so the loop doesn't run again. And then it puts the eight in that spot right here. So I put two caret two greater than symbols here. That that's where the that's the state of the data at that point. All right. So now we're going to start this J loop over again. J is going to be two now. So we're looking at the three. Uh, three is in temp, possible index is two. And the first thing that happens is this 10 gets bumped over, replacing the three, because they're assuming, hey, just they're assuming we're going to move everything. So uh, it puts a 10 there, and then uh, it lowers possible index, and then it moves the eight over. And you're like, but where's the three? Remember, three is in that variable temp. And then Finally, it gets just like it did with the eight, and it says, "Oh, okay. Well, I can see uh, I need the three needs to go right here." So it blows the three in there, and we're all done. And then, um, and then now we're going to be checking the four. Four is in temp, and again, it shoves the ten in where the four was. It puts the eight where the ten was, and this time, uh, uh, and this time, the uh, four goes right there. Um, so it doesn't keep going because it's not less than the eight. So it goes ahead and throws it in. Um, uh, yeah, I know there's a lot to take in. Um, you, good people, can copy this code right out of the progress check this afternoon, put it into a REPL, and add print calls to see like what's happening at what point. That's 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 what I'd recommend. Um, but I want to show you another way, and this might help you. Uh, understand it better. Um, this is another type of problem. Um, we could ask, I could ask you, what would this array list look like after four passes of an insertion sort? So here's the starting data. So let's, let's, 
let's by a pass, I mean all the way through. So remember, it starts at the second element. So the first pass, what's going to happen is the two is going to go here and the five is going to go there because it's going to put the two there and then move the five over. So uh, pass one, we move the two over. Pass two, we're going to be looking at the six, and the six is not going to be moved. So pass two, nothing's changed, but it does count as a pass. It went through the code, and it didn't change anything. Um, and I said down here, sometimes nothing changes. But remember, let's, let's back this up. What we're doing, we're starting at the second element. This is the most important thing. I know that code was kind of crazy, but I need you to be able to look at some numbers and tell me what it's going to look like after each pass. So right here, this two insertion sort starts at the second element and then says, hey, should this element go anywhere to the left? And then it finds the right spot for it. So in our case right here, it goes to the very first spot. Um, the next pass, we're looking at the six. Uh, and we're like, hey, should the six go anywhere to the left? In this case, no, so we don't move it. The next thing is we look at this one and uh, should it go anywhere to the left? Uh, yeah, it happens to go all the way to the left. So, uh, uh, did I propose we were going to do this with a bigger thing? No, good. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, it turns out it only needed three passes. So I should change the slide to just say after three passes, cause, uh, oh shoot, I have to change all those slides. Um, that's fine. I'm going to just do it right now. Cause I'll forget. Um, because it's fully sorted after three passes and it, it doesn't need any more passes than that. So everybody, uh, I'm going to see if you have questions, but first I want to say this, this sort method, the insertion sort is relatively easy to code. I mean, you saw it was only like eight or 10 lines of code and it works really quickly for small data sets but it gets very inefficient for large data sets. Let's say you had a million entries in a list. Oh my gosh, you'd have to take a million items and go all the way back to the beginning. Like when you're on the millionth item, it, you're gonna take 999,000 plus steps checking all the way back to the very beginning before it knows that it's good. So, I mean, potentially. Um, uh, anyone wanna ask a question? Just unmute yourself. Uh, Gavin asked on the chat, uh, what happens if two items are the same? Uh, yeah, I just won't move. Yeah. Can you go back to the code real quick? Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to have this uh, slide deck. So you'll be able to copy the code right out of the slide deck even and then uh, play with it. I'll, I'll say this about this code. If I were going to code this, and I did code it for uh, as practice uh, for an array list, uh, I didn't do this thing where I re I moved the ten over and then the eight over and then and then because I feel like we don't know yet if we're supposed to move everything. It seems bad form to move everything if we're not supposed to. This code works fine though. It puts it it puts the number right back where it was, you know, if 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 we're supposed to, if if it didn't if it wasn't supposed to move, but um. Uh, and you could see this, everybody, you, like I said, if you get this code, put it into a REPL and then put some print calls in uh, uh, to see what happened. Uh, you know, that can be really helpful. Uh, all right, so let's talk about the other sort. And again, if this is freaking you out, don't freak out. I, I'm not gonna ask you to code this, uh, at least not today and certainly not on the test. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to especially want you to be able to look at the numbers and say, oh, this is what it's going to look like after four passes or something like that. So the selection sort, I find this one a little bit easier. Uh, this starts at the very beginning. So I have element zero, right? And then it goes through the whole array and finds the smallest number in the array. And the smallest number might be the one you're on, but it might be way, way at the end, whatever. When it finds a number that's when it finds the smallest number in the in the right hand part of the array, it trades places with the current one and the smallest number. And then it goes to the next spot, you know, element one. And then it goes to the right and checks all the other numbers. And if it finds a number that's smaller than itself, you know, it finds the smallest number and then it trades places. 
between those two items. And it just works its way through the list. So this one doesn't sort it perfectly along the way. Like it's just trading places. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's all right. Um, but let's check this out. Uh, I did eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn to? Tommy Two Tones, single great hit in the history of rock and roll. Um, pass one uh, takes this eight and says, hey, is there a number smaller than the eight anywhere? Uh, sorry, what's the smallest number to the right of the eight in the array or the array list? And it says, hey, you know what? The smallest number is the zero. So then it trades places, the zero and the eight because it found the smallest number. Hey, the smallest number ought to go right here in the beginning. Then it looks at the six and it says, is there a number smaller than six anywhere to the right of me? Well, yeah, found the three. So then it trades the three and the six and there's no judgment. It's not trying to make sure the trade is putting the bigger number in the right place over to the right. It's just, it's found the next smallest number and it's traded places. That's the uh, selection. The selection is really, the number we're looking at here, this selection is the seven now. Uh, after the, after two passes, uh, the next pass we're looking at the seven and we're like, hey, is there a number smaller than a seven here? Uh, what's the smallest number? The five. So it swaps the five and the seven. And then, uh, uh, then again, it's looking at the seven and saying, is there a number smaller than the seven to the right? What's the smallest number? The six. It swaps the six and the seven and and interestingly enough, at that point, it's done. Um, it actually would keep going. It would have to check the eight, but it doesn't have to check the nine, right? It knows that, uh, you know, if the nine, uh, it, by the time you get to that point, the very last item is going to be the biggest number in, in the list. Uh, you don't have to check if it's bigger than itself or, some, you, know, you know what I mean? So yeah, this code would do a few more passes, but nothing more uh, would change. Here is, uh, an implementation of this again for an array. I, again, I got it out of the, the the multiple choice problems that I assigned you that you're going to do later today. Um, uh, so notice this starts at element zero and it goes all the way up to one less than the end. I just was telling you it doesn't have to do this for the last one because the last one is a number all by itself. It doesn't have to check if there's anything smaller than itself. Um, and what it does is it identifies the index of the smallest value that it's found, it starts by saying, I'm gonna assume the current one is the smallest, but then it goes through all the rest of the elements, checking if uh, checking to find the smallest number. So we know how to do this, right? It, it finds, it, this is just a simple, it's finding the minimum. So it looks from the whole rest of the array, finds the smallest value. And if it finds something smaller than the starting point, it, 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 it replaces this min index. And then down here, it says, hey, if min index is not the number I started with, then it does a swap. And to do a swap, you need a temp variable. It stores the one it was checking in a temp variable. Then it replaces that with the one from later in the list. And then it puts the temp variable in that one uh, at the end. So uh, anyway, you'll have to look at it on your own. Um, I totally get that I'm just throwing big blocks of code at you. But again, you're not, you don't have to code that. You just have to understand logically what's going on. Um, so, and this, this sort is just like the other one. It works great for small data sets. It's relatively easy to code. Quick for small data sets. When data sets are really large, it's not very efficient. Like there's no effort to try to put the bigger number in the right place over in the array. It's just trading places. But it, I mean, it's, you know, it's robotic. It's, it's perfect for a computer. Um, okay, so uh, let's 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 right here try to do three passes of an insertion sort. Sorry. Oh yeah, we're back to insertion sort. So I'm 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 doing I'm going to do a practice with the insertion sort and then a practice with the selection sort. So insertion sort, remember, is the first one we learned. So um, folks, we start at the second item. We're looking at the six. And we're going to check, should this go anywhere to the left? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so six is less than eight. So it puts the six there, bumps the eight over. Uh, next pass, we're checking the seven. Should the seven go anywhere to the left of the eight? Well, yeah, it should go uh, 
it should go uh, between the six and the eight. So it puts it there and bumps the eight over. Um, and I'm asking for four passes on this one. So now it's checking. Uh, uh, the nine, uh, nothing happens because the nine was already in the right place. And now it's going to check the three. It's going to go put the three in element zero and bump everything over. Uh, so pass four uh, in this particular data set, we're done. Questions? Remember, this is our first type, the insertion, where it puts a number and then bumps everything over. Sorry if I'm ruin ruining your days, everybody. Um, it's not as bad as it seems. Now we're doing the second sort method, the selection sort. That's the one where we trade places. So same data set. Uh, we start at element zero, uh, which is the eight, and we go through the whole array and say, is there a number, what's the smallest number to the right of me? Happens to be the three. So then we're going to trade places, the eight and the three. So one pass, eight and the three trade places. Uh, all right, now we're looking at the six. We take the six, we look at all the numbers to the right. Is there anything smaller than a six? What's the smallest number? Nothing. No change. But it still counts as a pass. The code had to run and it had to figure out, okay, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, have to change anything. Now we're looking at the seven. Take a look at seven. Is there anything to the right of the seven that's smaller than a seven? Nope. Again, no change. Uh, and now uh, we look at the nine and we look to the right. Is there a number smaller than a nine anywhere to the right? There is, and we trade places and we're done. So uh, this is what I'll put on the test. I'm gonna ask you to write out what each 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 line would look like, and don't worry, you'll you'll you'll, you'll have time to practice it. Um, that's it. That's it. Any questions <laughs> that you want to ask right now? And I know we'll have time to. You can have private questions. You can um um we can do breakout rooms. We're gonna do all that stuff. So okay. Um. What we're doing today, uh, you got to finish the warm up. Then we've got a five question Google form practice that has some of these sort things in it. And then we have a small coding activity that is unrelated to sorting. And then uh, folks, this, this last thing, uh, the AP classroom thing, um, I'm saying uh, because there's 18 questions, um, I'm saying this is due uh, Sunday by midnight not do today by minute. I don't want you to rush it. I want you to take some time. There's 18 questions. A lot of them are really quick. Like you can do them in, in like a minute, but then some of them, especially when we start doing the sorting, I don't want you to just go, oh, F it. I'm going to choose A and just whatever. I don't care. I'd rather you spend a little time. <laughs> Marcus, I see it. Was that a dog? <laughs> a human? I, it looked like a dog. Anyway. Um, uh, uh, Alonso says, why not Monday? Let's say Monday. Uh, the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm not expecting you to do this uh, instead of the Super Bowl. So um, I forgot we didn't have school on Monday. So let's Monday by midnight. I'm not I'm not assigning you homework for Monday. I, you could do it today. Uh, 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 and you could do it tomorrow. I just didn't want you to rush it today and go boom, 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 18 questions, multiple choice done, and then and not really have tried like it, it doesn't help you if you don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say Tuesday because I don't want to make it assigned on a day when you're uh, doing work for another class. So um, there it is. Whatever. Deal with it. I'm through changing it. Um, uh, and all that conversation. Was